Hey guys, and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Yes, this is a Nord Stage 2 we have here in front of me. A big shout out to one of my viewers, Anders, who has very kindly loaned me this for a couple of weeks so that we can do a series of videos on my channel. Cheers, mate. I appreciate it. Okay, today I think we are just going to do a initial impressions, early thoughts kind of review, because I've only spent a couple of hours with this keyboard. But anyway, it's going to be interesting to compare it with the Electro, which I'm very familiar with. So I think it's going to be an interesting topic. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. So I've been enjoying the splits and layers on this instrument, and that's what you've just heard me demonstrating. Um, we have, actually it's a little bit mind-boggling, the splits and layers on this thing. Uh, splits and layers are not new things, you know, a split is when you have one sound at the bottom of the keyboard or in some area of the keyboard and a different sound somewhere else, and a layer is when you have multiple sounds going at the same time. But this sort of does it in an extra dimension. Let me try and explain. So. These two slots is what makes it a little bit uh, hard for me to get my brain around. Each slot is a different uh, sort of keyboard panel setup. On slot A, let me demonstrate, I have the bass sound that we just heard. And a piano up here. If we switch to slot B, then I have a completely different setup. I don't have anything down here on the bass, but up here we have a sort of FM DX7 kind of sound, which is very nice. And I can adjust the volume of these by moving this knob here, and I can switch it on and off by doing that one there. We can add a piano to it as well if we wanted to. We could add some bit of Wurlitzer there, and I can adjust the balance there, and that's an example of a layer. But it gets really complicated and interesting when I switch both of these slots on together, because now we have the bass sound from slot A, the piano from slot A, and the synthesizer sounds from slot B. I've been having a lot of fun with that. I didn't think I'd actually enjoy mixing synthesizer sounds with the piano sounds, but it's actually been really, really nice. Um, one other example of that then is this sound here. Let me show you what's going on here. If I take slot A, we have... I have a layer where we have a synth sound mixed with some piano, I'm bringing up the volume of the piano section here, this is the synth section here, which I can fade in and out, or I can switch it on and off completely. Really nice controls there. But then on slot B, what do we have there? I don't actually remember. Okay, I have a some bassy sound at the bottom, nothing at the top. So when you mix these, then we get the piano and the bass kicks in here at the bottom. Let me show you how that sounds.
So there you go, that's enough about splits and layers for today. I've only sort of touched the surface of what you can do with this, but I really, really like it. And it's so very simple to set up your sounds as well. I know some people have criticized that you can't set the split point wherever you like. Uh, there are sort of predefined split points here that are marked on the keyboard with small LEDs. But actually that hasn't bothered me in the slightest. Um, there's enough of them to make it easy enough to find the one that you want. And I like the fact that it lights up so you can actually see when you switch programs where the split point is. So thumbs up for me, that's not an issue. Um, shall we listen to some of the sounds in isolation? Yeah, let's do that. Um, actually, before we do that, let me give you my very first initial impressions when I got this thing up on my keyboard stand. Um, firstly, it's a very light instrument, which was quite nice compared to the, um, fan, the FA sorry, and the Motif that I've had uh, previously. Uh, very light, but the build quality of this thing is it's just outstanding. It's really awesome. We've got a metal control panel here and Nord have added a nice sort of textured like sandblasted finish to the paint and I, I think there's probably a reason for that. Maybe they're thinking that it would cut down on the reflections if you're on a stage with lots of lights shining down on the keyboard but I just think it's lovely to the touch and it doesn't attract fingerprints or anything like that. So that's really cool. And this nice finish extends actually all the way around the keyboard to the underneath. So there's sort of, they're not skimping here. They've made it look nice even on the bits that you can't normally see. So uh, top marks again to Nord for that. I've got to say also that the knobs, buttons and switches and things are absolutely fabulous. They are really tight and high quality. There's no loose wobbly knobs here at all. I had a Roland FA and that had a volume knob which I could sort of rock around and that was, oh, it annoyed the hell out of me. So I actually had to sell that keyboard for that reason. But the user interface on this is gorgeous. We have really nice rotary encoders here that travel 360 degrees, well actually endless. They're called endless rotary encoders, I think, with a nice LED ring so you can see what you got set. And then these more conventional, so analog, pots but they are so solid with just the right amount of resistance it's beautiful my other first impression when i got this keyboard in front of me was damn there's a lot of knobs and settings and switches and parameters on the front panel here i was completely bewildered after my nord electro and my nord lead synthesizers um, it's really weird seeing all this stuff laid out in front of you it, it actually feels strange having to turn your head to see the stuff on the left and then all the stuff on the right I end up having to shift around on the key on my piano stool here to try and find the parameters compared to my Nord lead where everything was in this tiny little area of the keyboard it feels a little bit strange anyway I think it's time to move on and take a listen to some of the sounds I'm not going to focus on the sounds that I've demonstrated previously in electro because I have other videos on my channel for that and it's very clear when you're playing this that it, it's a descendant of the electro. A lot of the sounds are exactly the same or just very, very slightly different. But there are some new sounds on here which I'm quite looking forward to showing for you. That is one of the new um, acoustic grand piano sounds that are on this instrument. There's the massive library of... Uh, grand pianos and upright pianos you can download for this instrument. What we have loaded here at the moment is a, just I have just the one I think, yeah, we have a couple of electric grands and a Bosendorfer. I don't even know how you say that. But I have a separate uh, video actually where we go through all of the piano signs. So I'm not gonna dwell too much today on the acoustic pianos. The reverb section here is brilliant with a very easy hands-on control. I can adjust the size. Let's try a hall, for example. I can adjust the dry-wet balance, so this is completely dry. Or we can 50-50. I think they're beautiful reverbs, really, really 
really nice and I love this hands-on control here. I can switch them on and off if I want to with a button. Let's choose a sort of stage reverb, shall we, for the... Yeah, that's nice. Um, let's take a listen to the roads. Um, these I recognize from my electro... On my channel there is a review of the uh, road sounds on the Nord Electro 2, so go check that out. We won't linger on these, because they're all the same. There are a couple of new ones here that I did want to experiment with. This Sparkle Top is a new road that isn't available for the Electro. Let's have a listen. This is a larger sample than the Nord Electro 2 samples. But I don't like this so much actually. There's not very many dynamics. It doesn't do very much when you go from soft velocities to hard velocities. Let's try another one. This is a Mark 1 Rhodes that is amped through some Fender amplifier, I do believe. Yeah, that's okay as well, but I think I prefer the original. I prefer the sound of the Rhodes that came with the Electro, actually. So, um, not, not so impressed with the new Rhodes sounds that, that this thing has to offer. Having said that, the original ones from my Nord Electro 2 are absolutely fabulous, and I love them. There's a couple of other things we can play with, actually. We have a amp sim section here that we don't really have on the electro. Let's enable for the piano sound some amp simulation goodness. I like that, I like that a lot. different amp models you can choose between. This is a Fender Twin. That's pretty cool. Now there is some debate raging on some internet forums about the clavinet and if the distortion on the Nord stage sounds as good as that epic distortion that you get on the uh, Nord Electro 2. And once again, I did a video all about that topic, um, which you might want to review if you haven't seen it. Um, let's have a listen. That's with some quite, let's twist off the reverb. That's not too bad. Let's wind it up to something a little bit more extreme. Let's try some different models. Oh my gosh. 
Ah, this is cool, man. I think we can dispel that myth in my ears that this sounds every bit as good as the Nord Electro 2, and there's a much more variety of sounds to play with. We can boost the bass. I can boost certain frequencies. I love it, this is cool. I love it a lot. This is absolutely fantastic. Good stuff, Nord. Okay, um, where were we? We were going through some of the pianos. Switch off this extreme distortion. There is a new Wurlitzer that I'm keen to prove, to test out. Sorry, prove, that's Swedish. Let's uh, try this one. This is a amped Wurlitzer. So here's the original one from the Electro. Here's the new one. Yeah, I like that. Put in a touch of distortion. Oh my god, that's not a touch of distortion. What are we doing? Let's wind down that. That is superb. I love that. That's a big improvement on the original Wurlitzer sound. Excellent. Okay, let's press on and I think we will discuss... Actually, there's a new CP70 piano. Let's do that very, very quickly. Um, switch off some of that. We have a new CP70. That's like an electric grand piano. Uh, where do I find that? We have it here. CP... CP80 amped. Okay. Bit of, bit of um, chorus might be nice. No, that's phaser, there we go. It's very sweet, isn't it, with the chorus and the reverb there. Okay, the final thing we need to compare with the Electro is of course the organ section. I haven't dug into this at all yet, so this will be my first time together with you that we experience this section of the keyboard. Okay, let's get stuck in. That's your B3 sound, no effects. Oh, actually, what's this? We have some chorus switched on. We don't want that. Uh -huh. Sorry. I like that a lot. That's much more mellow sounding than my than my Electro. So that would be your Brian Auger No Leslie sound there.
I like it a lot. Let's put on a bit of vibrato chorus. This is, oh, I'm really enjoying this actually. I wish I had my expression pedal connected. I don't, and I don't know exactly where it is right now. I like that a lot. I'm a big fan actually of the Hammond organ sound without a Leslie loud speaker. It was a little bit harsh on the Electro. This thing does it very well. This is a newer generation of the uh, Nord's organ simulation. I think this one is based on the C2 or the C3. That's their dual manual, actually C2, I think it's called. That's their dual manual organ emulators. This one inherits the uh, organ sort of physical modeling engine from that. Let's put on the rotary speaker simulation and I guess we do that by pressing this button there. Drive, okay. Organ, yeah, we can have it for the different sections. There you go. Switch off the vibrato for a second. I like to go between stopped and fast, and I think that should be possible here. Let's figure out how to do that. Uh, maybe it's like that. So that's fast. Yeah. There we go, that's stopped. Can I do it with a foot pedal? Yes, I can. Okay, when I press the pedal, it accelerates. What shall I play? Uh, having a bit of a blank here. Let's do the old. Yeah, I like that a lot actually. And I'm of course need to figure out a little bit what settings I like here the best. This is, as I said, the first time I've ever tried this. Another thing of course I'd like to do is split the keyboard. So we have a lower manual in this area and a higher manual in this area. But I think that'll do it for now. We have some percussion of course we can try. Sorry, I didn't do that. So 
yeah, that is a big improvement, I feel, over the Nord Electro 2. I can really get into that. I would like to connect up my swell pedal and spend a few hours sort of experimenting with this and getting a feel for what I like best. But we won't do that in this video. I will save it for another time. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. We'll call that quits, I think. In the next video, I want to dig into the synthesizer section. Uh, one feature I really enjoyed actually is you can have multiple arpeggios that are synchronized with each other, which is something I couldn't do with my Nord lead. For example, we've got something going on down there. So there you go. As you can tell, I'm enjoying it so far. One thing I'd like to do is dig a bit more in detail to the synthesizer section because I'm a, also a fan of the Nord Lead series of synthesizers. So I'm very curious to see how this kind of stripped down version of the Nord Lead stacks up to what I know and love. That'll be interesting. I think we'll do that in the next episode. Guys, once again, thanks for joining me today and please don't forget to subscribe, like or leave a comment because I love it when you do that and it motivates me to carry on producing these videos. Cheers for today and I'll see you next time. Ta-da!